Hello there, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It is Hunter's Point here with another video. I hope you all are doing well so far for your Thursday morning. I wanted to come on here real quick and answer a question that I have seen periodically over the past eight to nine months in particular. It has to do with eternal security because I understand there's a lot of people who have discovered my channel who are relatively new to the faith, right? Perhaps they had just become believers you know, weeks before finding my channel. I've even had people who say that my channel actually brought them to Christ. I I don't even know what to say about that. That really takes me away whenever I see something like that. And I'm always very appreciative. And I, I try to give all the glory, the praise, and the honor to the Most High God. But, you know, point is, there's a lot of people who watch my channel who have said that they're relatively new to the faith. And even people who have struggled with legalism. And they tend to ask me questions in regards to eternal security. And what I've noticed is, you know, whether it's asked one way or another, it all boils down to one central question that they have. And again, it's especially with those who are new to the faith. And the question they have is this, is once saved, always saved true? Basically, what they're asking is eternal security biblical. And the answer to that question is yes. After all, think about it, right? What could you possibly do to ever unsave yourself? If you've been given eternal life, eternal means eternal. Everlasting means everlasting. If you could lose it, it wouldn't be everlasting anymore. So what could you possibly do that would cause God to supposedly revoke your eternal life card? Do you really think there's anything that you can do or are doing or will ever do that will cause God to just throw you away? Do you really think that God is one to abort his children or to put his children back up for adoption? Do you really think there's anything you could ever do that would cause God to throw you away like trash? No, that's not how God works. Our God is a very loving God. He's not just going to throw you away because you've made mistakes. Because the truth is he paid for your mistakes. He paid for my mistakes. He paid for all mankind's mistakes. You see, the nanosecond you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ alone for your salvation and eternal security, you were indwelled with the Holy Spirit, whereby you were saved and sealed with it unto the day of redemption. I'm putting emphasis on the word sealed there. All right. You received the seal of God when you were indwelled with Holy Spirit the exact moment you believed on Christ alone. Do you really think anything that you ever do can break the seal of God? This is not your seal. This is not human beings' seals. This is the seal of God. He has sealed you with the Holy Spirit. So again, do you really think there's anything you could do that would cause that seal to break? No, of course not. When you become a believer, you are spiritually baptized, which is the only true baptism, into the body of Christ as sons and daughters of the Most High. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. That's Romans 8, 15 to 17. Those who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ alone for their salvation and eternal security have been adopted by God. The only thing that could ever separate you from God theoretically is your sins, but Christ already paid for those. To tell us die, it is finished. Jesus did it all. How could you pay for your sins if Jesus already paid for them? You can't. Jesus Christ shed his blood as the payment of all of our sins, past, present, and future, at the cross of Calvary almost 2,000 years ago. He was buried in the tomb three days, proving that he was dead, and he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures, for our justification and therefore our salvation. That is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Jesus did it all. You cannot pay for your sins, which is what would be required, because Jesus already paid for them. Right, The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but Jesus paid for your sins. And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It's very, very simple. 
There's nothing we can do apart from believing in what Jesus did for us, because he did all the work. It's not of our own performance or behavior or good works or good deeds that we're saved and sealed. It's by believing entirely what Christ did for us on the cross of Calvary almost 2,000 years ago. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, two of my all-time verses, says the following, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Again, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, love, love, love those two verses. It's about as clear as you can possibly get in all of Scripture. What else could possibly unsave us besides our sins that were already paid for in full? Well, nothing, but theoretically, if Christ lost his life again, but that's impossible. Christ is eternal. All right, when he died and was buried, he resurrected, conquering hell, death, and the grave as he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. Only Christ losing his life again could unsave us, but that won't happen. He is eternal. He is everlasting. He is forever. All right? His life is now your life. You have the Holy Spirit abiding in you. Jesus is able to save you completely and forever because he will always live. He will never die. He will never perish. That's why he tells us the same thing in John 10, which I will be reading here. So yes, once saved, always saved is true. Eternal security is biblical. Because there is nothing that can ever separate us from the love of God. Jesus Christ, the God of Son, the, the Son of God, the, the second part of the Trinity, he provided the payment of our sins in full with his shed blood. The Bible calls Jesus' ultimate blood sacrifice the propitiation of our past, present, and future sins. It's very, very simple. Jesus paid our sin debt in full. Nor height nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 39. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, there's that word, perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That's John 3, verse 16 to 18. Now we're going to go on to Ephesians 1, verse 13 to 14, which says, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of of your salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. In whom also, after that ye believed, ye were sealed, there's that word sealed again, with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Again, Ephesians 1, verse 13 to 14. Now we get to John chapter 10, verse 27 through 30, which says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That's referring to people who have believed on Christ alone, apart from works, because works play no role in our salvation. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. That is as clear as it gets. Jesus did all the work. By believing in him alone, we are not only saved and indwelled with the Holy Spirit, but we're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, again, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed, once again, the word sealed is used, unto the day of redemption, which is referring to the rapture of the church when we get Redeemed as the purchased possession of Christ. Purchased with what? Jesus' blood. It's very, very simple. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Works have nothing to do with your salvation. We went over that already in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. Salvation is a done deal for you the nanosecond that you believe the gospel. That's all you have to do to be saved. You are heaven bound and rapture ready at that precise moment that you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus. So if you're a non-believer watching this video, 
or you're confused on salvation, I'm going to ask you this. Have you placed your full faith and trust in Jesus alone? Or are you trusting some or fully in your own works to get you there? Well, I hope you can figure out the answer to that question. And now would be the time to believe on Christ alone if you have not. So that is the video. I wanted to come on here and deliver this message. It was entitled, Is Once Saved, Always Saved True? And from the scriptures, looking at it all, it's pretty clear that yes, once saved, always saved, a.k.a. eternal security, is true. And it is a primary foundational doctrine. So that will conclude this video. I will see you all in the next video, should the Lord tarry is coming. Otherwise, God bless.